Hello and welcome to the inaugural Detective Squirrel Investigate video. So the evidence presented in this video, um, uh, well, uh, evident the pieces that I found during my own research. Um, uh, there is uh, not my it's not my own opinion. It's based on research and anything presented in uh, this video or any of the Detective Squirrel Investigate videos is uh, not meant for offence and uh, and the. Jack the Ripper killings particularly have been uh, an interest of mine for some time. So uh, that's why I decided to actually present these videos. Um, this is the first in a series of three videos um, on uh, a uh, subject called They Weren't Jack. Um, this is about the Jack the Ripper killings and the three main suspects that were named by the police at the time of the investigation. Um, each video will go into one of the suspects and going through the details of why they were actually considered as a suspect and also the evidence that shows they were in fact not Jack which is why the series is called They Weren't Jack and so this is the first part of the series and is about Montague John Druitt. Uh, so what is the evidence that led the police to consider Mr. Druitt to be the killer? Well, MJ Druitt lived, worked and played cricket um, you, with the famous WG Grace, in fact. Uh, for Marylebone Cricket Club in Blackheath in the west of London. He was fired from his job as a teacher. Um, the reason, even though was that it was never made official, it is believed that the his employers had discovered he was homosexual and this was the reason for his firing. Um, at least... It, historians actually believe that's the case and there is evidence to actually suggest he was homosexual and that was one of the reasons he was had so many difficulties at the time which because it was at a time where uh, even though in today's society it seems ridiculous and even though there is uh, some countries in the world that still have it uh, it was illegal at the time um, this also seems to be the reason why the members of his own family suggested to the police that he was Jack the Ripper. It was almost like their way of disowning him and distancing themselves away from him because of his uh, sexuality. He was known to frequent the uh, Whitechapel area, although not on any kind of regular basis. Uh, not long after the last of the canonical five murders, he committed suicide. All that doesn't seem to make much sense, does it? It doesn't seem to actually point towards anybody being a killer. Um, but that is pretty much the evidence that is used to actually suggest that he was Jack the Ripper. Um, no real physical evidence you know and then so if we look at the evidence that shows that John Montague John drew it was in fact not Jack much of the same evidence can be used to actually prove that he wasn't um, the fact that um, he committed suicide the psychological profile of the Jack the Ripper killer would suggest it's not the kind of um, killer who would after actually reaching his magnus opus the final uh, murder of uh, Mary Jane Kelly um, that he would uh, commit suicide um, you've also got the fact that um, even though he frequented the area, as I mentioned previously, he wasn't someone who was there regularly, and there is no evidence to actually suggest he was in the Whitechapel area at the time of the actual murders. The, uh, 
his Druitt's mother had suffered from severely from mental health issues, uh, most likely severe depression or perhaps bipolar disorder. Um, she was taken away and uh, put into a, an asylum and Druitt had uh, began feeling a dip in his own mental health and um, because he'd felt the same way as his mother had described feeling, he felt that his life was going the same way and that he would himself actually be put into an asylum and this is a time when uh, being put in an asylum isn't the same as it is today the uh, science of psychology was still is in, in its infancy they still used horrific uh, treatments such as trepanning drilling holes in people's heads frontal lobotomies and so on and so forth so the um, conditions in asylums at the time was certainly not somebody who with mental health issues would want to be in and so um, instead of actually facing the possibility of being locked away in an asylum he chose to actually uh, commit suicide instead he threw himself in, uh, off one of, it's believed he threw himself off one of the bridges over the Thames and was found uh, washed up uh, few days afterwards and all of these things certainly don't sound like the actions of a serial killer certainly a psychotic killer on the uh, way that Jack the Ripper was um, it seems as I said before the only reason his family made the accusation to the police that he was Jack the Ripper or could be the killer was the fact of his um, his his being a homosexual the same reason he was terminated from his job so that rejection from his own family and his employment um, distinctly possible it all led to actually the dip in his mental health that led to his suicide um, and so Montague John Drew was not Jack the Ripper and in my opinion the poor man should be allowed to rest in peace with no further incriminations so uh, join me for part two when we will be looking at uh, the second suspect George Chapman uh, otherwise known as Sherwin Klaus Klauski um, so if you'd like to uh, like this video if you enjoyed it and uh, please uh, feel free to subscribe and uh, click the notification bell and uh, I'll see you next time so until then Detective Squirrel out